At the turn of the 20th century, Lagos had emerged as a social, economic and political force to reckon with in the whole of the northern and southern protectorates, areas which, when merged in 1914, became Nigeria. In the following decades, these positions were consolidated as Lagos became the hotbed of political activism and the social conscience of the nation. With these rich political and socio-economic advantages, Lagos was launched into statehood in May 27 of 1967. At creation, Lagos State, the smallest in Nigeria, can best be described as a developing national agglomeration. It also retained its position as the nation's capital until December 12, 1991. In terms of infrastructure and other indices for measuring development, it was a work in progress, yet its path as a pace setter and being the first among equals appeared to be well cut out. The founding fathers recognized the state's opportunities and potentials and set out early enough to do the groundwork to harness resources that would place the state on good pedestal of development. The first three years 1967 to 1970 was therefore a stage for laying the foundation of the state's greatness as the pioneer administration busied itself with the provision of structures and systems for governing the state. They go state when we got it. It was a cosmopolitan city and uh, we have it at a stage of development that I feel that we have to develop it further to meet the yearning of in the 21st century of people of Lagos. They built the Eco Bridge and we went into building some other infrastructures depending on what uh, area of people's life you want to touch on, like health, agriculture, and uh, we, we went about this by taking the bull by the horn. I would readily say so, because I was part of those few years. As Federal Commissioner for Works and Housing, I worked very, 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 very closely with the Governor of Lagos State and he set down the standards in terms of uh, fiscal development. And Seva described as a progressive time of Lagos from that time. I think the government had some challenges. Um, governance is not a one-off thing. It's an everlasting thing. Uh, we inherit something. Somebody starts somewhere. They stop. I was talking about the West Regional Government that turned Ikeja into an industrial estate. That was how it was developed. That was their own foresight at that time. And that was their own plan. When uh, Governor Johnson took over, um, when Lagos State was created in 1967, in 1967, he had to build on that. From 1970, the outcome of the incubating years began to manifest in forms of new economic and social infrastructure with the upgrading and transformation of existing public utilities. For instance, the vision to integrate all constituent parts of the state led to the conception of the articulated transportation modes. These featured a ring road design that strategically linked Ekwe by the construction of the Itoiki Bridge to Ikorodu, Ikeja and Badagri. It followed up with partial implementations of the first, second and third axial roads comprising Apapa Ikeja Expressway, Ikorodu Road, 
new Qatar and Eco bridges before their construction was transferred to the federal government. The regime reclaimed the present Victoria Island from Bar Beach shoreline and built Eco Bridge and the Badagri Expressway. To get to Badagri, when Lagos was uh, created, you had to go to Ota, Agege Motor Road, Songo Ota, then Aori Land to Badagri. But one of the first things Balaji did was to revive the plan and executes that plan of a road from Lagos, Igomo, Surulere to Badagri. That was that direct link. You don't need to go through what was then Western States. Uh, later on, of course, the road to Epe, although it was too lane at that time, was also put in, in place. Lagos State have been very lucky, especially when you think in terms of the founding fathers. For most of the plans he put on are the ones the various governors are more or less improving upon. As the enabler of development, the focus on infrastructural development played significant roles in accelerating the growth of the state. It also ensured a conducive environment for the economy to thrive. I focus my administration on the rural areas. My Attention was more on the settings of the rural areas. But I'm glad to have, again, before I got in here, or I became the, the governor of Lagos State, he had this program of, I think, the four or five programs of rural development and so on. So, so my thinking and his own thinking just came into each other. We had our programs for the housing and the uh, rural infrastructures. So Lagos State was on the verge of expanding more when we came in and we tried to build on that. It was a stage that was on the move. More people were uh, coming into the state and most of the infrastructure could not stand it. So the focus was more on making people, you know, feel, you know, have roof over their heads and be able to move around. The primary focus was how to sustain peace and gain the confidence. And this, I think, uh, will be very successful. More than physical development, I have a totally different philosophy too. Neither society nor governance is just based on physical development. But most important is how does the body politic advance in many respects. One, in respect of people having great opportunities, in respect of greater security, in respect of um, then um, hope, and then in a way in respect of building up not only the immediate area, Lagos State, but also building up when we all had the hope. The leadership here, they are serious-minded people. What I see in terms of fiscal development, for example, in Lagos, uh, could not be better. During that period, um, institutions, right from primary to tertiary, were being advanced. Uh, Lagos State Polytechnic was most started then. Many more primary schools have been done. So, in terms of relativity, a lot was done. That didn't mean that, of course, the whole place was turned into El Dorado or paved with gold. No. The infrastructure in place that requires to be attended to, that also required to be to be keep expanding, as such as play their own effect, multiplier effect on the balance of the country. So indeed, Lagos' position as the federal capital offered compelling reasons for the pursuit of strong infrastructural base from the period of the oil boom through the gradual decline in the national economy to modern times that infrastructure will bring development, create jobs, add value to people's property. No other state in this country is investing in infrastructure for the sake of the people as much as Lagos. No. In the mid-70s, Lagos held our own. There were many defining infrastructure 
interventions that also had very significant architectural statements that competed on a global basis. And from the Nitel building, the Eco Bridge, the third mainland bridge, one of the longest at the time when it was built in the whole of the sub-region, with the work that has been done since 1999 to date, Lagos is re-competing again. Lagos is taking on very, very massive infrastructure interventions that will make her competitive again. <laughs> Lagos is developing in various directions, like an octopus. Financially, the state took off with a sum of £10,000. The quest for speedy development made it to participate in the preparation and implementation of three national development plans. The 1970 to 1974, the 1975 to 1980, and the 1981 to 1985 development plans. The objectives of these plans were similar and they formed the basis for the financial and economic policy of the state government. This policy, which has been sustained till today, centered around growing the economy through investments on productive sectors, emphasizing on projects with the highest rate of return, increasing and diversifying the state's agricultural production and stimulating the development and growth of industries. These include the creation of employment opportunities, raising the standards of living through investments in social services and the mobilization of revenue sources for optimum returns. It also seeks to explore other revenue sources at state and local government levels. Lagos is a mega city. Lagos was described as uh, by a former president of this country as a jungle place. And we Lagosians we were determined to make the brilliant showcase of Lagos. Lagos is also unique in that it is, uh, I make no apologies about it, I've said this many times, it's the best administered territory in Nigeria. And because of the quality of governance, which has uh, been getting better consistently over a number of years, uh, it's easier to get many things done in Lagos than in most parts of the country. As the impact of these policies began to unfold, Lagos became the center of attraction to people from far and wide. The influx resulted in geometric increase in population with its attendant pressure on socio-economic infrastructure and its services. Lagos will always, there's no doubt in my mind, Lagos will always remain the economic hub of West Africa, not just, not just Nigeria, of West Africa. No state in this country is receiving of migrant from other parts of the state. The population density, the vehicular density, the economic, you know, uh, uh, development of the state. You cannot succeed and organize a respectable society or a state without infrastructural development. To meet the demands of governance and development, it was therefore clear from the onset that Lagos cannot totally depend on federal allocation. The first budget of the state simply divided into revenue estimates of £10,511,640 and expenditure estimate of £10,313,950 confirmed this reality. In 1972, Akintola Williams Committee on Internal Revenue was set up to carry out a survey of existing revenue sources and to develop new ones. When I got in here, I think the revenue of Lagos was about 500, 600 million. And by the time we were living, I think it was increased to 2.5 billion. So, and I'm happy, like I said, Lagos have been very lucky. The, most of the governors come in, they started improving on the IGR. Trends from 1980 showed a gradual increase in tax revenue from about 138 million in that year to over 239 million naira in 1987. Further commitments by the government pushed the figure beyond 1 billion naira in 1992. By 1999, 
the engagement of consultants, especially by the then Colonel Mohammed Buba Marwa's regime, shot the figure higher before the financial re-engineering pioneered by Ashiwa Jubala Tinubu's administration. There were no funds simply to meet up what we needed to do. Even when I prioritized to security and roads, but the magic was a man called Otumba Dekonla. I was introduced to him and he was actually the man who turned around the IGR. I have a very dedicated and loyal people. Lagos is indigent, but we have created the opportunity for people to realize their dreams. We are kids of circumstances. We are leaders of providence. We know we will have crawling bruises if we start on our knees. But I will take this challenge for inheritance for our children and grandchildren. Tinubu tried because when he came at it, he radicalized the whole system concerning the revenue. Lagos today, they can do without the support of uh, Abuja. And it's been increasing consistently. You know, even in this, uh, you know, recession, it hasn't gone down. It's not just uh, being prepared for raining there. We prepare for the flood of economic disaster and frustration that was coming. The credit to uh, everybody in Lagos State for their cooperation, because if they don't cooperate, then even some of these things... With a strong and progressive financial backbone, Lagos State has had it good in terms of continuous development. This has rubbed off on various sectors through the efforts to provide a conducive environment for individuals and organizations' productivity. The business environment is very good. It has been very, very promising. It encourages people of all the states. Lagos State has done extremely well. This has been great. Uh, I never ever imagined that our company was going to sort of grow this big. But you know, we thank uh, you know to Lagos. Because if the environment wasn't good, I would have checked out a long time ago. The business environment in Lagos State is very, it's thriving, it's very active, it's very engaging and stimulating. In the whole of West Africa, Lagos is number one. It's the best place. You bring anything to sell and you sell it. It's the best for business. For instance, the transportation sector had witnessed several changes and transformations that have enlarged its capability to provide an integrated, intermodal, multimodal services for the people. The upgrading and expansion of health facilities and services has turned around the state healthcare delivery system with greater focus on preventive, maternal and child care. The education sector, in spite of its phenomenal growth, remains formidable in terms of developing young minds as it continues to receive various forms of interventions to ensure a conducive environment for teaching and learning. From the time of the Lagos Executive Development Board, the LEDB, the housing sector is still growing in leaps and bounds through the Lagos State Development and Property Corporation the Ministry of Housing, numerous private property development organizations and individual efforts. The environment and waste management sector has been taken through no less outstanding phases, such as the introduction of the private sector participation, the PSP, and the waste to wealth programs. This has led to an improved sanitation and public health. In 1928, we had the bubonic plague in Lagos Island, which was uh, very, very devastating. A, a lot of people died then, so, and this was due to insanitary living conditions. So that was what led to the creation of Lagos Executive Development Board, which led to the development of areas around Okwawo, uh, Dosumo, Idumagbo, and these other areas, which was central, and they pre prepared a scheme which was a central legal scheme. So they moved the people from out of that place to accurately, you know, to rehabilitate them. For security and safety, it has been a story of purposeful change through the support of the organized private sector and philanthropists. Lagos now operates a new security architecture that has reduced criminal activities, making the state more business and investor friendly. And the purpose was to prevent crime 
but should uh, uh, it fail and crime occurs is to defeat it. And to be able to do that, we had to build necessary infrastructure in terms of equipment, mobility, communications, motivation of the men. We did all this, <clears throat> and at any point in time, we had at least 300 patrol vehicles patrolling the streets. But what people didn't know was that we had also about 200 cars, but not marked, doing the same job around. With all of these, Lagos has emerged stronger and better positioned for statehood to the extent of competing with countries in terms of data and statistics. From a fledgling and few industrial concerns, the state has grown to be Nigeria's industrial, commercial and economic hub with 22 industrial complexes and over 10,000 commercial concerns. The free trade zone located in the state is fast becoming the nation's largest industrial hub. Lagos is a very big center for business, a commercial capital. Anyhow you look at it, it was the commercial and economic capital of Nigeria. The Lekki Deep Sea Port is an ongoing project where the Nigerian Post Authority and Lagos State Government are shareholders. Um, we believe that um, such deep, deep sea ports are required. There's also an approval for the Badagri Deep Sea Port, which would also come on board and it will be in Lagos State. So that would expand the horizon of Lagos State and increase its dominance in the maritime industry. Additionally, its strategic position and prime location in West Africa readily provides abundant windows of opportunities for investors that guarantee returns on investments. Consequently, 18 of the Fortune 100 companies operate here. It is where you can call the nerve, the, the commercial nerve center of Nigeria. Every other thing happens in other states for different reasons. But as far as business is concerned, Lagos is where you need to be. Lagos is home to Nigeria's capital and money markets. It is the kernel of aviation activities and the nation's telecommunication and media hub. It accounts for 90% of foreign trade flow and 70% of total national cargo freight through the Apapa and Tinkan ports, the busiest terminals in West Africa. Lagos is also the second largest contributor to Nigeria's gross domestic product and the leading contributor in the non-oil sector. Banking and financial sector services will thrive when the following are present. One, you need to have demand for your services and that also brings up the issue of uh, the, the, the population, the issue of the market, it has to be there, there has to be demand there. And the presence of large manufacturing entities, the presence of other commercial activities, the presence of trading, the presence of hoteling, the presence of any kind of business activity you can think of. They are all in Lagos. If it's not in Lagos, then it means that business is particularly not going to be a particularly large one. It's a thriving business community. It's a thriving environment for any cargo that is brought into the country, comes into Lagos. In certain instances, the cargo is unbundled, warehoused, and initial sales tax from Lagos. Which other port can you compare to the port of Lagos? That's the point of entry of the world into Lagos. Population density in, in Lagos is higher than any other part of West Africa or the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa for that matter. However, the facilities in Lagos are also significantly higher. So when you take um, Lagos consumption per capita, Lagos electricity per capita, uh, Lagos uh, road infrastructure, if you take the number of branches over of ban commercial banks, over 30 percent, between 25 and 30 percent of all the commercial bank branches are in Lagos. In Africa's economy, Lagos gross national product triples that of any West African country. It is the node of the West African gas pipeline project, Nigeria's nexus of Trans-African Highway and the Sub-Sahara Africa's largest information, communication technology ICT market. With an economic size that is the fifth largest in Africa, if it were a country, Lagos is designated Africa's financial center. It goes without saying, if Lagos 
um, has the largest number of concentration of human beings in the country here, more than almost about 20 million people. And with the number of industries and businesses in Lagos, it has to be the number one financial center in Africa. With such commanding statistics, it is no surprise that Lagos is full of hope and abundant economic opportunities. These are the magnets that continue to attract people into the state. According to a 1963 national census figures, the population of Lagos was 1,443,568. By the end of 1985, it had grown to over 7,300,000 with an annual growth rate of 8%. Population is always an asset anywhere. Population is never, <laughs> is never a liability. When you live in Lagos, when you work in Lagos, when you do business in Lagos, you can't but feel the pulse and the attention of this large number of people in Lagos. For economy of a location to thrive, there must be a large population demand. The market, the market is there. That, that's number one. The people make Lagos tick. The cosmopolitan nature of Lagos makes it tick. The uh, admixture of cultures also makes it tick. The more you have a large number of people concentrated in certain environment, you should be able to harness their resources you should be able to, to deploy them in terms of uh, labor, in terms of uh, various uh, industrial activities, and they will also be able to generate and contribute to, um, uh, to the GDP of, of the nation. Today.